So in this section, we are going to look at some of the common problems that are associated with the centrifugal pumps during its normal operational lives and some of the things that we can do to prevent such problems from happening and to remedy the situations. So as you can see on your screen, common faults are remedies of a centrifugal pumps. That's what we are going to be looking at. Remember from our previous, our earlier session, we identified the impeller as the main pumping element. So we also have other areas that are prone to problems, like the seals, the bearings. Okay, since the bearing will, have, will affect the alignment. And then the wear rings also that helps to uh, seal the space between or prevent uh, the liquid from flowing from the discharge to the suction. Okay, so we are going to look at the common faults now and uh, the possible remedies or prevention, so to say. The first that we'll look at in this section is a uh, reduced flow or low flow rate. So if the flow is reduced or when we have low flow rate from the discharge, that will affect other processes downstream. So the flow rate have to be maintained at the most optimal level as required by the process downstream. Then abnormal noises, okay, is also a problem that could be associated with the uh, centrifugal pump. Remember, we have rotating components, parts within the centrifugal pump. So this component, when they are going out of um, integrity, so to say, you see that they will be making those unusual noise or producing those unusual sound or noise as the pump is working. So abnormal noise, the possible causes and remedies, we are going to look at them. The overheating, overheating too, can be a problem with the centrifugal pump. Overheating can cause temperature increase on the discharge, can cause uh, damage of the bearings, can cause damage of the internal components because heating it beyond what it is meant for will definitely increase the rate of expansion. Okay, so if that stringent condition could not be handled by the internal component, of course, it can result to destruction of those components. Then leaks, which is one major problem in the operations of the centrifugal pumps. We are going to look at it too and how we can prevent such the vibration. So we know since it's a working machine composed of uh, rotating parts, definitely it must vibrate. But we have the normal vibration level from each of these equipment during normal operations. So once the vibration level is going beyond what is normal, there will no problem is setting in. So it's a problem that we need to look at and see how we can remedy such from causing problem in our operations. So we are going to look at reduced flow. What are the possible causes of reduced flow? When the volume of liquid discharge will be less than what is expected, what could be the possible cause? So the possible cause, as you can see, one is the clogged impeller clogged impeller okay so when you have uh, too much debris coming into the pump through the suction you see that that have the capability of blocking this impeller and once it is plugged that will definitely reduce the flow rate then another thing that can cause reduction in flow rate or Rather, the plugging of the impeller is when this uh, 
Twitter that is on the suction line. Okay, when it is dirty, when it is filled with uh, debris, of course, some of them will definitely uh, tend to go through the filter because the filter is saturated with debris. So that can cause uh, plugging downstream of uh, downstream of the filter, which is the pump impeller. So clog impeller reduce the volume will reduce the volume of uh, liquid that will be taken in and discharged into the discharge and thus reduce the flow rate. So, like we said earlier, blocked filter or even blocked suction line can also reduce the flow rate. When you have debris on this line or when you have the filter blocked, that can reduce the amount of fluid that is administered to the pump and then the one that the pump will be delivering into the process. So all of those will... Uh, so worn-out bearings. Worn-out bearings can also cause reduction in the flow rate. Remember this arrangement, as you can see here, the impeller is an overhung impeller. So if you have problem with the bearings, that can cause the impeller to be rubbing on the bearings. And once the impeller is rubbing on the wearings, that will be seizing the impeller. And the impeller will not be turning at the required speed. So once the impeller is not turning at the required speed, that will affect the, the discharge pressure. It will affect the volume of fluid that is discharged from the pump and thus the flow rate. So when we also have leaking valves, this is the, the valve on the suction line, okay? This is a gate valve. Once this valve is leaking, what will happen? You'll see that it will also reduce the, the pressure, or, the, or rather the amount of fluid that is coming into the section. Or we have leakages at these flanges, okay? Or even if we have leakages on the discharge side, on these non-return valves, the flanges of these non-return valves, if there are leakages on the line, that will reduce the flow rate. Or the pump seal is leaking. You will see that some of the fluid, it depends on the degree of leakage, okay? If the degree is severe, if the leakage is severe, you see that most of the fluid will be, the liquid will be uh, leaked off and not be sent into the discharge. So in such case, you see the pump uh, doing more work to deliver the required volume. Okay? So leaking valves, this is the bearing, this is the overhung uh, impeller I will say it so once we have problem with this you see that that can cause this to shift downwards and then the impeller will be rubbing the wearings especially on the down, downward part of uh, the pump so if that happens that will slow the impeller down and reduce the flow rate of the equipment so leaking valves, then incorrect pump speed, which will be a, which could be affected by several factors. Okay, first the speed of the driver is what will determine the speed of the pump impeller. So remember the volume of fluid that will be discharged is directly dependent on the speed of that impeller, the rate at which this impeller is turning. And then the rate at which this impeller is turning is dependent on the speed of this equipment. So anything that affects this speed will affect the incorrect pumping speed and thus the flow rate. Okay? Then 40 bearings too, even if the equipment is running normally, 40 bearing too can also affect what is transferred through the shaft to the impeller. So what are 
some of the remedies in such case, okay, is to actually ensure that the motor is running at the required speed and then the bearings also they are functioning properly. So we can use vibration analysis as we'll see later to be monitoring the bearing to see that the bearings are functioning properly. Then if the strainer is plugged, okay, we can replace the strainer. If it is a sensitive process, we can put a differential pressure gauge here. As the pressure difference between the strainer is increasing, that will tell us that the strainer is getting clogged. The filter is getting blocked. As we see it in the control room, or as we send an alarm signal for us to come and change that filter. Then the bearings, like we talked earlier, we can use uh, either vibration monitoring or we can improve also our lubrication uh, routine on each of these bearings so that their lives could be extended or to aid them to function properly or normally. So for clogged impeller, like we said, the fitter, we need to maintain the fitter, be sure that the fitter is always clean. Okay? Then for clogged suction line, we need to ensure that the source of our liquid from which the pump is taking the liquid, we want to screen a lot of all of these debris, okay? So that it's only those fine debris that may be allowed. But if possible, we can screen all the debris from them before it gets to the pump itself. That will also assist. So here we have the single suction impeller and then the double suction impeller. Okay, like we are, uh, acknowledged earlier, you see that here we have two bearings and uh, two uh, gland packing or two mechanical seals. Okay. These are mechanical seals, two of them. So we need to have a maintenance routine that ensures that these seals, they are functioning properly so that uh, the leakage from them will be reduced so as not to affect the flow rate. Okay? Here too, there is a seal here behind this impeller. So we also want to have a good preventive maintenance routine program that we uh, be changing our seals when as at when due okay or during our normal money rounds we can be checking them once the leakage is coming out and it's beyond what we can actually take care of then we change those uh, seals or gland packings the abnormal noise when uh, excessive noise is coming from the pump. So what could be the possible cause or what can we do to rectify the problem? So abnormal noise can be as a result of cavitation. Cavitation. Remember, we said uh, when this impeller is turning, it causes reduction in pressure around the impeller eye so as to suck in the liquid. So now there are situations where the reduced pressure that has been developed around the suction eye may be lower than the vapor pressure of the liquid that we are about to pour. What will be the result? You will see that the liquid can go into the vapor state. So we now have bubbles okay, of uh, the liquid vapor within the liquid. So, and remember that this impeller is to accelerate the liquid as we discussed earlier, the liquid molecule. And then as the accelerated liquid molecule impinges or strike the body or the casing of the, of the pump, those 
the as it strikes the casing, that will momentarily reduce the speed. Are we getting it of the liquid molecule? And that reduction of speed, we said earlier that that will now result to increase in pressure when we apply Bonelli's uh, principle. So now the thing is this: as the the mixture of liquid and air, because of the reduced pressure at the suction that is lower than the vapor pressure of the liquid, what will happen is that as the fluid is accelerated and impinges on the casing of the the pump, the bubbles will do what? They will collapse. And again, too, that those that did not collapse, that increase in pressure that is usually resulting will cause the collapse of uh, those bubbles. So as those bubbles are collapsing, you see it's making some unusual sound or noise, okay? As if you have gravels, stones running through the pump. So you will hear that sound. So that is called cavitation. So once there is cavitation, that can cause unusual noise or sound. Then misalignment. If there is misalignment between the pump and the motor, remember we have the shaft and the coupling here that is under this uh, coupling guide. Okay? So if it is misaligned, whether offset, whether angular or a combination of all of them, you will see that that will increase the, since the coupling, okay, at times it's opening and it's jamming as it's trying to turn. Okay, that can increase the noise from the coupling since it's jamming and turning at times. And then as it's struggling to overcome that misalignment force, you see that it can also affect the bearing. And once the bearing is affected, that will also contribute its own noise. So misalignment is something that can cause uh, noise or problem within during the operations of the electric uh, of the of the pump, the centrifugal pump. So cavitation. Cavitation, how do we take care of cavitation? is to ensure that the suction pressure is is always okay higher than the vapor pressure of your liquid or of the liquid that you are pumping so these are determined during selection you know the liquid that you want to pump you know the suction the vapor pressure okay and you know the suction pressure of the pump that you are selecting so that suction pressure must be higher than the vapor pressure of the liquid so that the liquid will not go into vapor during operations. Then again, too, if your strainer is plugged, you know, it can reduce the uh, amount of fluid that is coming into the pump. So that can result to situations like that also. Then misalignment, we want to maintain our bearing carry out precision alignment during uh, routine maintenance and during installation too. And then we want to have vibration program in place that will help us to see if misalignment is developing in the course of operations. So if misalignment is developing, what we need to do, that is if we have vibration analysis in place as we are uh, looking at the vibration signature, one of the two times harmonics is increasing, they will know that misalignment is developing. Of course, we want to open up the guide, carry out our alignment, alignment checks, and then realign the equipment properly. Then one bearings can result to abnormal noise, as we discussed earlier. If the bearing is dry too, that can cause abnormal noise. So we want to have a good routine of lubrication in place and we want to have the best technology to assist us in knowing when the amount of lubricant grease that we have applied is enough on the bearings okay wherever that we are we are having them whether grease or oil okay we want to also apply the right kind of oil 
Urina. So loose part two, it is possible that the impeller can become loose during normal operations, especially when the the hold down boat, okay, is not properly tight. The impeller boat, uh, the impeller knot, I mean to say, if it is not properly tight, or during operations something happened and then it becomes loose, so that can cause the play of the impeller or even the wearing not sitting properly can also result to it turning within the within its seat as the impeller is turning or rather turning with the impeller okay that can also cause abnormal noise so the next that we are going to be looking at is overheating Overheating is something that is uh, also common. So what are some of the causes? First, insufficient lubricant. Remember we have, in this overhung uh, impeller, we have two bearings here. So if the lubricant here is not sufficient, the bearings can run dry. And once the bearings run dry, that can cause abnormal noise. Okay, because the friction will increase on the rotating parts of the bearing and that can increase the noise or even the seal remember the seal it's expected that in some arrangement the fluid itself the liquid itself will lubricate the seal so if it is not enough it can cause it to run dry and once it's running dry that can cause overheating are we getting it so all of these, both in the first case, the bearing running dry and uh, the sea running dry, all of those can heat up the environment and cause excessive heat. Excessive friction due to warm parts too can also result to heating up of the fluid. Like we said before, this is the wear, the, we have the wearing gear, okay? So if it is warm, if it is one, it can cause severe friction between it and the, even the pump housing. And in some cases, between it and the, the impeller, the wear rate will increase. Then here too, if it is one to the possibility of it turning with uh, the shaft too, will also be there. Okay? And if it is running dry i will get it or if the impeller is loose on the shaft if it is loose on the shaft that means the impeller will be playing around the shaft here too it will be playing even these seals if they are loose they could be playing okay so all of this will contribute to the heating up of the pump itself then we, are, we also have blocked flow path. Blocked flow path, especially on the discharge line. You will see that once the discharge is blocked, the pump itself will be acting against excessive pressure that will be caused as a result of that blockage. Okay? So that excessive pressure will now be causing the pump and the motor to be exerting extraordinary force to overcome that increased pressure downstream the pump. So once the flow path is blocked, that of course will it can even cause the heating up of the driver, the electric motor itself, because the electric motor will be seeing more load. So all of those can cause heating up of uh, the system. Then when you run the pump dry that fluid okay so the liquid that is going through the impeller also serves as lubricant too so if it runs that dry if it is run dry you see that the impeller and the wearing okay they, they are bound to since the clearance is very small to touch as it's turning so that will also cause heating up of the the, the pump itself then if you operate the pump outside the recommended temperature range, remember there is a, 
the ambient condition that the pump is designed for, both temperature, humidity. Okay, so once you operate it outside that range, assuming the ABS that uh, you are expected to operate the equipment is say 40 or 30, let me say 40 degrees Celsius, and you are now operating it in a very hot environment, say 60 degrees Celsius, you will see that the overall temperature, by the time you had normal working temperature of the equipment, you add it, you now add it to the ABN because first the equipment, especially the electric motor, will assume the ABN temperature. Then from the winding itself, okay, you see that during normal working, that heat that will be generated from the winding will be added to what has been assumed by the body of the motor. So if it is more than usual, say maybe that's 60, you will see that that will tend to take the temperature of the electric motor to a very high uh, degree that can cause serious problem on the electric motor itself, cause the winding to burn out. Then the pump itself, the same thing, can cause serious problem because the components within the pump, they are designed to operate normally at certain temperature range because of expansion and uh, contraction. Okay. So the next that we are going to be looking at is leaks. So what could uh, cause leak and uh, what can we do to remedy the leak? So one gasket, either at the suction end, okay, or at the discharge end between those flanges, either at the valve, the shut down valve or the discharge valve once we have weak gasket or leaking gasket that can cause leakage at those flanges so we all want to have in place a good um, uh, mechanical joint maintenance uh, strategy in place okay so we want to have good boating techniques that will help to ensure the longevity of these joints and the flanges. Are we getting it? So we want to apply that good boating technique, use the appropriate gasket and the right size of gasket, apply the appropriate torques, okay, on this boat and use proper torquing technique on the boats, okay? So that will help us to save the life of the gasket and prevent uh, one gasket. So seal damage, once it is damaged, we have serious leakage here. And once we have serious leakage here, it can affect the bearing and even the lubricant that is meant to lubricate the bearing. So seal damage is one thing that can result to leaks also. So what we are saying is uh, this, these are seals, okay? So once it is damaged, you see that water will be seeping out. And as the damage is increasing, the pressure of the water that is coming out will be increasing and it can affect these two bearings. Likewise, the one that is here can affect these bearings and even seep into this uh, lubricant. And here too, it can also seep into this lubricant, okay? And it's meant for these bearings. And that can affect the bearing operations. So loose connections too. At this connection joint, this uh, flange joint, if any of the boats they are loose, all of those can cause leakage. That leakage will affect the amount or the flow rate of the fluid, the amount of fluid that will be delivered into our process. Then cracked pump housing. This is a pump housing. Once it is cracked anywhere, since the pressure of the fluid is increased here, you see that it will be leaking out of those cracked points. So those are some of the that can cause leaks in a centrifugal pump or pumping system. So if we have crack, as we have said, you can seal it up till it could be changed or you can, if you have a replacement in store, 
that change that particular pump okay then vibration so excessive vibration during normal operations the equipment must vibrate since we have rotating parts in them so excessive vibration is what is not good we have the normal vibration so once it's going beyond what is normal then we want to uh, look into it and see what is actually causing it so what could cause the pump to run at a very high vibration level the first there as we said earlier is misalignment misalignment can increase the two times rpm vibration okay so that vibration as it's increasing it will be transferred to all components of the pump downstream the bearings the impeller itself are we getting it so that increased vibration could be caused by so like we said earlier once we are able to take care of the misalignment we have a maintenance program in place that helps us okay we can have the vibration analysis program in place that will assist us to be looking at the alignment the degree of uh, the coupling alignment okay of this the pump arrangement we'll look at the motor end then we'll look at the pump end are we getting it so once we have that in place that will tell us once misalignment fault is developing in the course of uh, our analysis then unbalanced impeller that is when the center of mass of the impeller does not coincide with the center of gravity okay you see that the impeller would tend to be throwing towards the side that have the center of mass so as it's throwing towards that side it will be increasing the one times rpm vibration of the pump okay so that's true can result to the rubbing of the impeller itself on the wearing so that is a condition that is not not good and if left unattended to can cause further deterioration of the bearing and uh, also other parts of the pump so vibration analysis too will help us when we are looking at the one times uh, rpm vibrations okay it will help us to see when these unbalanced forces are developing in the impeller of the pump then loose mounting bolts can cause vibration all of these hold down bolts if they are loose they can cause soft foot okay and that soft foot you see that the pump will be rocking or the motor will be rocking and that will increase the vibration remember the pipings are rigid and once this is rocking can cause damage to any of those pipings that you are seeing on your screen so loose boats the remedy for it is that during a normal routine uh, the maintenance check okay every morning in a, a normal uh, special round we can check the boats look if we see any loose boats we talk it or during a normal pm program we we'll talk it or the vibration analysis if we have it in place too it can also tell us when looseness is developing in the pump then cavitation as we explained earlier so those bubbles as they are generated and they, as they are collapsing okay that will increase the noise and vibration of uh, the pump are we getting it so you see it uh, you hear that sound as if you have gravel flowing through the pump okay and that cavitation have a serious damaging effect on the impeller and the, the pump casing so we want to seriously guide against cavitation 